today we're talking about hardware optimization. One of the things that if you've had a computer a couple of years, if your boot time is a little bit slow, one of the things you might want to check in a simple upgrade is going to a solid state hard drive. Um, essentially what it is is a hard drive without moving parts and the value of that is it's so much faster. So when I switched uh, units here a couple years ago, I went from a regular hard drive to a solid state and boot times went from minutes, if not 10 minutes, to a matter of seconds. And uh, now that unit's three years old and it still has a boot time of just seconds. So the real value is going into those solid state drives, which now are in that hundred, you know, $150 price range, depending on size, but you can get so much more performance by upgrading that. And of course, if you're looking at new hardware, I would definitely look at going to the solid state. A couple of things you need to be aware of. First of all, solid states are not as large as spindle drives. So expect, you know, a 512 uh, size hard, gigabyte hard drive or even 256 versus, you know, five terabytes, but your speed's going to more make up for it. The other thing is you can go with multiple hard drives. So if you go with multiple hard drives, you can maybe have that five terabyte as your secondary storage drive, but your standard boot drive is going to be your solid state drive. The second thing that I had on here is doing your firmware updates on your hardware. Um, essentially, if you do Windows updates, it will automatically find that, but sometimes you will have to select to do hardware firmware upgrades. So things like that would do uh, wireless, uh, of course, hard drives would be part of that, your BIOS of your system, and that's a really important aspect. Make sure you keep current on those things, but we're going to get a little bit deeper here, a little bit longer. And on my screen here, I'm showing the resolution of screens has changed a lot here just in the recent years. I am currently using a Surface Pro 3, which the native resolution of that screen is 2160 by 1440. Now, it used to be the HD, the 1900 by, um, by 900 was kind of the standard resolutions that you were looking at. Now the resolution's going up. So making sure you adjust that resolution to maximize the performance of both the monitor you might have hooked up and the desktop that you have to hooked up. So in my case, I'm running the Surface Pro 3, which is showing a higher resolution than my monitors are even capable of on my desk. Now, if you don't have your resolution set properly, what you'll see is every other line might look fuzzy. Um, you'll get fuzzy edges. And if you're just not overall happy, it may not be the resolution of your monitor per se. It might be the settings of your unit. And of course, those are the kind of things we can help you with here at Next Tech. But looking at resolution can be very key and making sure you have the drivers updated on that. The next thing that you want to make sure is you have that proper connection between the monitor, projector, whatever it is, and your unit that you're connecting to. And I've got some resolutions here, but VGA is 1920 by 1080 at 70 hertz is really its maximum capacity anymore. So if you're going beyond that 1900 resolution, you need to upgrade to DVI, which is capable of 2560 by 1600, which is a huge resolution difference. HDMI is capable at 3820 by 2160. So that's an even bigger piece and can reach uh, even higher Hertz. And then DisplayPort really has that same capability. So if you're looking at going to advanced display, 4K displays is kind of the new statement. You need to go with HDMI or DisplayPort. They are kind of interchangeable, meaning you can change signal types from one to the other. But a couple things you need to be aware of. If you go HDMI, you can transfer your audio. If you go DisplayPort, there's no audio within that. So making sure you have those re resolutions set up. Beyond that, a couple of things that I've learned recently. Again, I told you I was on a Surface Pro 3. One of the things that you can do is you can run three displays all at one time. Well, how do you do that? The Surface itself only has one DisplayPort. There's DisplayPort chaining or splitting available. So there's adapter in there. I'll be honest, they're a little expensive in that $100 range to turn one display port into three display ports or one display port into three HDMIs, whatnot. So you connect three monitors. Now on my Surface Pro 3, you can only run three individual displays. So meaning that you can have three different type of displays going. Um, if you can hook up the fourth, meaning you get a three-way splitter, two of those displays will be mirrored so they won't be separate. 
And so understand that that can be daisy chained if you have the right monitor or split with the right device to split it out. Again, about $100 for that, that splitter on that. But that's a newer technology. It is a display port technology. And if you go to the Surface Pro 4, you can run more than three displays through the same type of chaining or splitting. And some of the other things that I put on here is when you start talking about more than two displays, which I'm starting to see many more requests on, is to go making sure you connect those monitors not only with those right cables, but then you're going to mount those so they have kind of the same uh, mount strategy to get a visa mount or something to that amount so that they all chain together. The value of having that is so that when you scroll kind of from one monitor to the other, it has a seamless experience for you. But even beyond just the seamless experience, we're starting to kind of see the bezels shrink on newer flat screen monitors, which makes a better user experience as you scroll from one monitor to the other. So you can truly split and maybe make a spreadsheet across two monitors with a limited amount of bezel interference. And so looking at some of these newer displays, which we're only talking less than $150 for 24 inch screens now. So that's a great value. In fact, uh, we're starting to see 28 inch displays getting into that price range. They're a little bit more yet, but still not ridiculously expensive. The one thing that does add quite a bit of expense here is touch screen. So you have to be pretty serious about going to touch screen. I'd love to have it, but you're talking three, $400 for a display of similar size with touch screen. Some of the things that get forgot here are keyboard and mice as you're upgrading your unit. You know, I was noticing uh, one of the gals in the office has her original keyboard and monitor or keyboard from her original computer when she worked here. She's been here 15 years. So we've got that PS2 adapter to USB connector, but she loves it. It still works, but you know, now it's really probably a time to upgrade that. It's probably wearing out to go to a newer device. And of course, wireless, especially on mouse with multiple screens, you're probably going to look to go wireless on that. And if you've had wireless maybe five, six, seven years ago, this is a different type of wireless. Much better user experience, doesn't disconnect, batteries last months, six plus months, um, much better value. On top of some of these things, Wi-Fi is a big deal. If you haven't upgraded some of your Wi-Fi connections, uh, we have now A, B, G, and N. So we now can approach gigabit type speeds on the wireless, but if you haven't upgraded the wireless infrastructure in your home or business or your laptop recently with a wireless connector, you may be limiting your connection speeds. So definitely upgrading that. In fact, if you want a reference, if you go to nexttech.com, in the top right hand corner, you'll see a little B icon. That's our blog. I just most recently wrote about that on some of the things you might want to look at. And it really defines both coverage and some of the limitations you may be seeing both in your home and your business when it comes to wireless. And it seems so simple, but at the same time, there's so many things that change that if you haven't looked at the wireless recently, you may be missing performance there. I know in my house, um, it took me many years to upgrade because I just didn't think about wireless. I connected a new device. Pretty soon I had 30 new devices. I started limiting some wireless. So looking at that, and of course cost is very, very low now with some of these new upgrades. I had a picture here of a whole bunch of different type form factors now for laptops, tablets, those kind of things. And we will post this, this deck out as soon as the webinar is closed so you'll be able to see these. But of course, there's still the standard laptop, which you know um, just has the regular hinge. Um, their price ranges start at cheese, three, four hundred bucks. Be careful that you make sure you get the right equipment for your business there when you get to those low end. And their nice thing about those is many of those are hard dockable, so you can click them into a dock at your desk. Some of the things we're seeing is like the Surface Pro that I'm using. The Surface Pro has a dock that's standard for it that slides in and connects. The newest level, and we're seeing these with the Surface Pro 4, is USB docking. So you can connect multiple displays with USB 3, multiple uh, USB ports, uh, multiple display ports, all of these kind of options plus charging, all with you know, USB type connectivity. The value of doing that is maybe if you upgrade frequently, which Chris and I do, is you can just upgrade and connect that USB port in versus having to change the whole dock Docs can be several hundreds of dollars and can be a value piece for your business. Some of the things to look out for is now the new tablets is 
There are tablets running Intel, vPro, um, Core i3, i5, and i7. Those are the key facts you're going to look for. Those are really powerful desktops. And in fact, they're desktop equivalents. Those i3, i5, and i7 Intel processors give you the performance of any desktop that's out there. Surface Pros absolutely have that technology. If you see Atom technology, this would be more of a comparison to an iPad. It's not a full processor. They still will run full Windows, but my experience has been after a year or so, you probably want to upgrade because your performance is going to be degraded because you don't have as much horsepower to be able to perform graphical applications and higher end applications. So look at the two. The last form factor, I guess, well, there's two additional form factors. One would be the yoga, like from um, Lenovo. The yoga's fold all the way back. The hinge just kind of flips all the way to the back. So the value of that is it's a laptop with a hinge, but then it can be used as a tablet. Same processor performance of a desktop, but with the value of a form factor that can be turned into tent mode or tablet mode or full laptop mode. And then the final form factor is kind of the all-in-one um, not a huge fan of the all-in-one necessarily, and the reason is with monitors upgrading as frequently as we've seen them size-wise, if you buy an all-in-one, when you upgrade, you have to replace the monitor and the desktop piece of it. If you go something like with Lenovo's tiny form factor, you can just strap that to the back and it has the right mounts to connect to a regular monitor, but still have the wireless keyboard and mouse, the wireless piece, and it looks very nice. It's very form slimming for your desktop, but you can upgrade the desktop without upgrading the monitor. They're more easy to work on, they're more easy to connect to. So that's kind of some of the things we're seeing there. Beyond that, I have some pictures here and I'll just kind of describe them to you. That's the USB dock, which gives you the multiple connectors or gives you the physical dock to snap in. Love both of them. They both work very well. Again, if you had a USB early version of it, you might have found that USB docking was problematic. The new versions seem to work much better, especially make sure it's USB 3. Speaking of USB 3, if you've noticed on the back of your laptop desktop, there may be different color ports on there on your USB. Here's the thing you need to know. USB 2 is black, typically. And so if you have something you want to transfer high speeds, like a USB hard drive, you want to make sure you connect the blue port to the blue port. That's USB 3. If you connect it to a USB black port, the two, you're going to get slower performance and you're not going to get the kind of expectations you might get on USB 3. You also might notice that you have a yellow port. That's a power port, high power, and it stays on when the unit is shut off based on your BIOS controls. So you can charge things like your iPhone and things, even when you're traveling, off the battery of your laptop or tablet, which could be valuable. And of course, blue means USB 3 and red means USB 3. So making sure you mount those to the same. If you have a keyboard and mouse, you can connect those to USB 2 and probably not see any performance differences. But again, if you have all blue ports, you're good to go. So that's what I have for everybody today. Yeah.